Adam, before the fall, walked with God. But even after sin, prayer is still acceptable to God. And this is quite remarkable, that when we offended God, he doesn't give us the silent treatment. Sometimes when we're mad at God, like when we're mad at other people, we might give him the silent treatment. Like, God, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm mad at you. No, God doesn't do that. He doesn't reject our, our prayers or supplications. God, time and again, hears the cries of his people, even after they had gone astray. We see this again throughout the entire Old Testament, and that's why the Old Testament is such a rich source for meditation and an inspiration for our prayers. We'll get into that when we talk about meditation, but to see it's this movement from a dwelling of disobedience to obedience. Prayer has everything to do with what Jesus said that unless you deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. That it's a move towards dwelling with God through obedience. In Christ, our prayer is as a son or a daughter of God in the Son, in Jesus. Prayer isn't like commerce. I give, then I get. God's not a divine vending machine. Prayer is not sort of putting in my change and then it, you know, getting E5 to come out. Prayer is much more relational. God's not an employer. He doesn't owe us anything, no matter how much we pray. Jesus' injunction against babbling like the pagans is trying to hit at that exact mentality. I pray just so that God will finally get sick of me and give me what I want. Well, God's got a lot more patience than we do. 